Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I'm one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl, Beatrice. She's hey. also my daughter-in-law. The best daughter-in-law. And we like to watch trashy TV Thanks. and then talk about it. Yeah. That's what this podcast is. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. And today what we're doing is talking about Vanderpump Rules. What are we on? Episode four? Episode five. Episode five? I know. God, we need to be getting into some actual Uh, content and drama. Are we just on a Tom Sandoval redemption tour? I can't with that. I don't want to have sympathy for this dude. He's a loser. I don't want to see him cry. Over and over and over again. Like take off his sunglasses on purpose so that you can see that there's a tear there. I know. Like Jesus, how manipulative. It's ridiculous. We'll get into it. Yeah. Before we do, we do have to remind you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words a lot. Mm -hmm. We have dumb opinions Mm -hmm. and often they're inflammatory. Yeah. Uh, We don't care. No. (laughs) And we're not going to apologize. And so if you're so silly, you might want to find yourself a hug box or another dumpster. <laughs> but if you are down and ready to party, then welcome to this dumpster, baby. Yes. And if you are down and ready to party, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. Yes. Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. So we much so stuff. So much stuff up on there. It's insane. And if you're watching on YouTube, first of all, hello. How are you doing? You look lovely today. You Thank do. you for being here. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe every Everything you do is magic and it helps us to grow. So thank you in advance. Thank you. All right. Before we get into the episode, there were a couple of items in the news Mm -hmm. that came forth. One regarding Raquel or Rachel Levis and another regarding Tom and Ariana and their continuing attempts to try and deal with the house that they both own. Okay. So let's start with Raquel. Yeah. Rachel. It came out today. That she is suing Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox (gasps) for revenge porn. What? Like for her revenge porn? So what ended up happening was um, Ariana went into Tom's phone one night while Tom was performing with the most extras. (sighs) She had a womanly intuitive hunch. She went into his phone. She saw a video of Tom and Raquel or Rachel having FaceTime sex. Mm. She sent that video to herself, which I believe she admitted on the show. And that is the distribution, I think, of the revenge porn. I'm not sure if Tom sent it around. I'm not sure who Ariana showed it to, if she did. But it sounds like Raquel is maintaining that they distributed this sexual video. And she's also saying she was not somebody who consented so Mm. again tom recorded their facetime sex yeah without her knowing so then sue tom why are you suing ariana i think that's stupid personally i mean i don't know and i'm like fuck around and find out raquel like i mean you fucked around with tom sandoval he's a piece of shit he's a scumbag i'm not saying she deserves this because nobody deserves revenge porn but i'm just like did she know that the porn existed like did she know he recorded it i don't think she knew that she did not know that he recorded it and i don't believe that she knew that it existed not until it was distributed and this is how ariana found out and then ariana told sheena while Sheena and Raquel were in New York to do Watch What Happens Live. I'm not sure if she sent it to Sheena. Yikes. She may have. And then that's when Sheena punches Raquel and they get the restraining order and this whole thing starts to go down. Well, there is a statement that was released by Rachel's attorney. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I'm going to read part of it. And then there is another attorney who's weighing in about the veracity of this case, like whether it has legs. Oh, God. Okay, from Rachel's lawsuit. They say Scandival injected new life into a previously faltering series, causing its viewership to explode to unseen levels and making its cast members mega celebrities. Due to a narrative deliberately fomented by Bravo, Evolution, and the cast, Levis became an object of public scorn and ridicule. To be clear, 
Levis has repeatedly acknowledged that her actions were morally objectionable and deeply hurtful to Maddox. She has offered numerous apologies. There is more to the story, however. Lost in the mix was that Levis was a victim of the predatory and dishonest behavior of an older man who recorded sexually explicit videos of her videos. Mm, plural. plural. Interesting. Without her consent, which were then distributed, disseminated, and discussed publicly by a scorned woman seeking vengeance, that's Ariana, catalyzing the scandal. Levis ultimately checked herself into a mental, mental health facility and remained there for three months while Bravo, Evolution, and the cast milked the interest her exoriation had piqued. To make matters worse, Levis was misled by Bravo and Evolution into believing that she was contractually barred from speaking out about her mistreatment. As a result, she suffered in silence as Bravo and Evolution watched viewership explode and the rest of the cast enjoyed unseen levels of public recognition and professional opportunity. Meanwhile, Levis, who was humiliated and villainized for public consumption, remains a shell of her former herself with her career prospects stunted and her reputation in tatters yikes well now i feel bad for my fuck around and find out Cam <laughs> comment i mean well when you put it into the context of rachel being a young woman right who falls under the spell if you will of an older attractive man who's the number one guy in the group right right and she i think was an opportunist from the very beginning like yeah. she was a fan she met james and that's how she got into the group but you can see how she was ripe for picking like, totally yeah and to take advantage of and you can also see how tom is the kind of personality that would absolutely take advantage of that situation right i just wonder what the extent of like the dis distribution and the dissemination yeah that ariana did because i mean if she just sent it to herself and then told people about it i mean i don't know if that really counts as like distributing it'd be one thing if she like posted that shit on ig right or something or like posted it on like the interwebs everywhere. Released it to TMZ. Oh my God, that'd be horrible. Right. That'd be so terrible um, for Rachel's sake and everything. But if she just sent it to herself and then nobody else, I mean. But I mean, even if she showed her real tight homegirls, can you imagine uh, if you got tr if you got cheated on and you found out by going through your husband's phone or your wife's phone, you send that to yourself, and then you show your best friend, like, look what I just found. Right. Is that really distributing revenge porn? Right. That doesn't feel like it, but I don't think the law cares about our feelings no, with yeah. regard to that. And to, to that end, there is an attorney who makes a comment about this lawsuit. And I think it's Mark Garagos. He's kind of a celebrity attorney who's been involved in a lot of different cases and trials. And he says... This lawsuit is squarely about illegal behavior and those who traffic in it and enable it. Rachel has apologized for her part in an affair. That's not a crime. Tom and Ariana are alleged here to have engaged in actual criminal acts. Mm. They then doubled down and used those actions to shame, bully, belittle, and intentionally try to destroy Rachel's mental health. The law makes it clear that recording someone without their consent and distributing that illegal recording is punishable by law. However, doing so while knowingly enticing them to engage in those sexual acts deserves the harshest of penalties allowable under law. So Whoa. I get it. Yeah. And I understand it. But is that really what happened here? Because Tom Sandoval didn't show Ariana the video. Right. And we can't assume that he showed anybody else the video. He may have. He's a scummy guy. He's a piece of shit. But right. like, we don't have that information or evidence at this time so he took the video yeah is that a crime i think so because without her consent that would be criminal right and i think in california like you have to have permission oh, yeah. from both parties in order to record something right so he shouldn't have done that and maybe that's a crime but we don't actually know if he disseminated it if anybody actually disseminated it it would probably have been ariana yeah but who showed like, her friends, but did she send it to her friends or right. did she show it to them on her phone? And if she sent it to her friends, 
then those friends could have sent it to anybody else. Right. But it's fruit from the poisonous tree. It's well, that's a legal term and it doesn't apply. But if it comes from her, though, Mm -hmm. and ultimately gets to 100 people, she's responsible criminally, right? Yeah, then she's SOL. Then she's totally fucked and they're going to have to settle on something so but like the whole like intentionally destroying her mental health i mean i don't know like what extent did they intentionally destroy her mental health like that's the same kind of argument that sandoval is doing like everybody destroyed my mental health to the point where like i wanted to mm-hmm. unalive myself it's like well i mean you brought it on yourself you kind of uh, these are the actions like this is the consequences to your actions so i don't know about that part but like the distribute distribution of her tapes that she didn't consent to yikes yes and if it really did uh stunt her ability to have professional opportunities she's gonna have to prove that up she's gonna have to show damages Mm -hmm. but like if she can show that well she obviously isn't on vanderpump rules right that was a great opportunity but from what i understand that was her choice like they wanted her to come back and i think lisa vanderpump actually gave a statement and like we offered her a lot of money Mm. to come back and she also made a good deal of money while she was here oh wow profiting off of everything but again i say i have much more compassion for rachel raquel because she's a younger person she's not a kid right she's not a child she should know better like what she did was wrong and she acknowledges that but i feel for her being in kind of a fucked up holly weird situation in this weird group of clout chasers mm-hmm. trying to find your place and falling under the spell of like this magnetic guy yeah who's totally a manipulative horrible narcissist who totally could have told her anything like mm-hmm. oh yeah me and ariana ariana are on the fritz we have a horrible relationship. It's just you, baby. I want you. And then fucking videotaping her. Oh, that's so terrible. That's so fucking bad. It's really bad. I think there's like a Netflix documentary about revenge porn and how this is becoming like more and more of a thing. We're mm-hmm. like horrible, awful men are recording women without their consent and then just posting it on fucking Pornhub and shit. Mm-hmm. <gasps> That's so terrible. We have to make examples out of each and every one of them. And I think the laws are getting stronger and stronger Mm -hmm. about this. And guys really are fucking around and finding out in terms of that. Wow. Well, we definitely will continue to watch it. What What I kind of felt when I was reading from her actual lawsuit it feels to me like maybe she's focusing right now on tom and ariana Mm -hmm. around the revenge porn and their part in what happened to her but like it also feels like at some point she's going to bring in bravo and evolution the production company because she's saying that they fomented or they made all of this worse they also told her she couldn't actually speak out and say anything so she was suffering in silence it feels like like i'm actually surprised that bravo and evolution were not included in this lawsuit why only tom and ariana does she have the money to sue huge corporate entities like bravo and whatever the thing i think that she has a family of means i do think she has a family that can back her up and i also think there's a lot of lawyers who would love to take a lawsuit like this really Mm -hmm. oh my god so we'll be watching it's very interesting personally and then I'll, I'll wrap this up i mean just but i'm like this is so interesting to me but personally i would sue the fuck out of tom but after what i did to ariana mm-hmm. i would not sue her i mean even though that's fucked up i'm really pissed you showed your friends or you sent it to sheena i'm not going to go after you because i shouldn't have done what i did right unless ariana did actually distribute mm-hmm. it to other people yes. or like actually send it to people because if she did that then ariana sucks and that's yep. pretty shitty like regardless if this is your man's mistress like you don't fucking just send out your nudies or these bad tapes and these sexy tapes and stuff to everybody just because you're bitter well yeah you don't do that but you also don't fuck your best friend's guy while her grandmother's dying or is passing and she's losing her dog and all of the things that Raquel did like I would feel so bad for everything that I did that I would leave Ariana out of it but like we don't know the scope of what Ariana did if she did anything at all right I'm sure they can get their phone records and they can find out if she sent something to somebody and who that was and maybe they will I think discovery would be really interesting i think depositions would be really interesting oh, so yes. we're going to be following this because well it's interesting i'm excited um and the last thing i wanted to talk about before we get into the episode is this tom versus ariana and the house situation mm-hmm. apparently ariana filed a lawsuit she wants to i think compel the sale of the house and tom sandoval is fighting ariana as she tries to force the sale of their home claiming he 
loaned her a big chunk of change that he wants back before selling the crib they shared. According to new legal docs obtained by TMZ, Tom alleges he loaned Ariana $90,000 and that she hasn't paid him back yet. More importantly, Tom wants Ariana to fork over the dough before a judge potentially orders them to sell the house and split the proceeds. In his response to Ariana's lawsuit, he also says he has a lien on the house that's directly tied to this alleged loan to her. Interesting. What? And he says no sale can go down until this is dealt with. As we first told you, Ariana is suing Tom over the Los Angeles house that they own. They lived there as a couple, blah, blah, blah. Tom's so far resisted, and now it's looking like he's digging in his heels and claiming that she needs to settle up with him over this loan before selling the house. So that's Jesus. interesting. So there's a lien on the house? So what is it? Like she owes the money on the house for the lien that you took out and no, 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 no. she also owes all of these bill payments and shit? Like, Well, I, I she, she didn't put a lien on the house. And so I, usually a lien is put on your house when you owe money and your house is up as collateral for that money. Right, yeah, yeah. And you're defaulting on the loan or you're not paying it. And so like, for example, with taxes, if you don't pay your taxes to the IRS, they can put a lien on your home. So that's interesting that there would be a lien on this house that he's saying is connected to $90,000 he lent Ariana. And I'm wondering if he's talking about the mortgage payments she hasn't been making for the last eight oh, months, which that's what, okay. would have been probably about $10,000 a month for her on a $2 million house. You're probably paying 20000 I don't know how much you're paying. But Maybe that's what he's talking about, but oh. that's not a loan. Right. That's just her saying, you didn't give me the receipts. And yeah. so I'm not going to pay you and overpay you because you've been lying to me. That's what I was confused of. I'm like, is this an additional $90 in like on top of everything that you say she already owes or if it's just right. all of the bill payments that she hasn't paid allegedly? Right. But then Ariana said a couple episodes ago that... The mortgage payments that she was being told to pay to Tom were an overpayment. So she's like, I'm mm. not paying this shit until you but tell like, me. But like by $5, like how much of an overpayment? Mm. Like, you know, you owe the mortgage every month though, right? Like, you know, approximately how much it is because you know how much the house is and how much you refied it for because you did the refinance with him. So I just think she just stopped paying because she wanted to be petty. And I don't hate her for that. I mean, I don't either. But she's going to have to settle up. Yeah. But I could also see Tom saying like, oh, yeah, I'll pay X amount and you pay this amount. Mm -hmm. But then he's just pocketing like the extra that she's paying. He's mm -hmm. over. Like, I don't know. Their finances seem so fucking messy, like way more messy than like the Browns. I mean, I know they don't got bankruptcies and stuff, but that lien on that house is interesting. Mm -hmm all of the shit that they've gone in on, like he's apparently done all these repairs on the house. So he's got all this money tied to it. And then she owns all the fucking furniture and stuff in the house. Right, which was interesting. Oh my God. This a is lot so of messy. beautiful furniture. I wonder how much that is worth. I know. I want a tally of everything. Mm -hmm. Hundreds seems, of thousands probably. It's gotta be, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. So this will be interesting to follow what happens with those two. So many lawsuits. If we ever get to it. I mean, I want to see it. the most interesting thing about this season. Right. That they should absolutely be covering is what are they doing legally? <sighs> what's happening with the, the division of the assets? Like, how does that work? Like, that's what we want to see. But that's not what we're getting. Instead, we're having photo shoots with Lisa Vanderpump with wolves and Graham Cracker, the dog. Right. And I'm like, I don't care, though. And Brock and Sheena in this episode. I I'm do like, care Stop. about that because I hate him more and more as the weeks go by, this Brock fellow. Yeah, but I'm just like, Sheena's insufferable, too. I'm yeah. just like, Ugh, I don't want to talk about them. Or fucking Sandoval crying in his green blazer <laughs> for us to care about him. Like, I don't care that you're sad. Dude. Yeah. I like really you're don't. sad for a reason. You did this to yourself and cry more. And I feel like he's just putting eye drops in his eyes to make himself oh cry. Oh my God. A la love is blind. What? That dude from love is blind. Did he? Oh my God. Not eye drops? this season, but it was the last season of love and blind. Yeah. There was that guy who was actually putting visine drops in his eyes during Stop. his talking head and not thinking that production was going to show it <laughs> but they did stop yeah, so maybe tom is doing something like that i wouldn't be surprised it really feels like production is participating though with this redemption arc like they really want us 
to feel bad. Why? I don't understand. Like after this blow up of season 10 that was so insane and you ha- you know all of your viewers hated Tom Sandoval mm-hmm. and still do. Why are you trying to force this redemption arc literally the next season when nobody fucking likes him? I think it's because Scandoval was like the biggest thing to happen to the franchise in many years. And yeah. so they want Tom to stay centered at this time in this season. I think it's also because maybe I wonder if they have a sense that Ariana's not going to be around forever because like you'd have to watch mm. the previous seasons to understand that like she really wasn't doing much. Oh. She was really just um, an appendage of Tom Sandoval. It was <laughs> Tom and Ariana, but like she didn't really do anything or mm. contribute much in my opinion to the show. So maybe they understand that she's probably cycling out of the franchise, but Tom is the one that's going to stay. Yeah. So Tom might be the one that they think they have to redeem. I'm not saying it's right or that I agree, but maybe that's part of the motivation behind it. I don't get it. That's stupid. And I don't, I don't want it. No, I don't want it at all. But I, I don't, I don't know what's happening. And then all of the other cast members are just like, okay, I guess. I know. I don't know what else to do. Let's just go to Tahoe, (laughs) I guess, and have this conversation with Tom and James where James is like, I don't want to, but I have to because it's my job. Right. I have to like you. So, okay, we'll try and be friends again. Yeah. And Lala trying to suck Sandoval's dick. We'll get to it. Yes, we will. Uh! Well, why don't we start with the episode? Since All right. We yapped a lot about other things. <laughs> well, this episode was kind of light on the content. Yeah. There was a lot of just like, it felt very fillery to me. Like yes. it was not, they're getting to the meat of the episode or the meat of the trip really next episode. It looks like all of the drama at Tahoe is going to happen next week. Boring. But everybody is getting ready to go to Tahoe in this episode at the beginning, besides Katie and Ariana, obviously. Mm-hmm. Katie's like, I don't care. I'm not missing out. I'm totally fine to. I am certainly not, not going to be in a home with Tom mm-hmm. and Tom. No. Those losers. No, thank you. <laughs> For real. And Ariana's like, I'm not going. Of course mm-hmm. not, because Sandoval is going to be there. But she's like totally side eyeing all of the girls that are going, like Lala and Sheena, because she's like, What about the loyalty to me, though? Why mm-hmm. do you like Tom Sandoval all of a sudden? Which it seems like in the preview. Sheena's going to call Ariana and be like, yeah, I really feel for Tom now. And I think we should be nice to him. And Ariana's going to be pissed. She is going to be pissed. But like the elephant in the room is the reality that this is everybody's job. Mm -hmm. This is how Sheena makes money. This is one of the avenues into all of her other money. Like she needs to show up like and if Sheena doesn't film, Sheena doesn't get paid. Mm. And so you're putting your friends who actually work with you, they're your co workers as well, in like kind of a terrible position by asking them to pick sides. Maybe you think, well, if they don't go, we can film shit here in Los Angeles. But that's but gonna like, be boring. What do you have going on I besides know. your your shop that doesn't open? That somebody shit on your patio. What do you got going I on? Know. Like I want to hear about your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear about all of the brand deals that are coming in that we all knew that you got. Like, why aren't you talking about that more? Right. I would like to know about that. And also Katie's dating. Like, when are we gonna get to that? I know. And Katie's apparently dating a girl I know. in like a relationship with a man. A lesbian fantasy. A lesbian fantasy. We know you love a lesbian yeah, fantasy. Yeah, I do love a lesbian <laughs> fantasy. And I was not um, pegging that for Katie, but I'm like, hey, I'm all about that. Yes. Yes, me too. Now we just need the gay fantasy to come true for Schwartz. Okay. Girl, I... Repressed, sad little Schwartz. Listen, your daughter was watching this with me last yeah. night. And she has not been watching the show. Like she, you know, sees it every once in a while when she comes out from playing video games in her cave. Right. And she's like, this show again? <laughs> And walks away. (laughs) But then last night she watched it with me Mm -hmm. and she saw the interact. Like she saw Schwartz look at Sandoval on the plane to Tahoe. And she immediately said, I have not told her any of this. She's like, oh, they're gay. They're fucking really. And I'm like, did you get the vibe that I got? Like I hadn't even told her my gay conspiracy because I knew she wouldn't Mm -hmm. care. And she's like, no, they're totally fucking. Do you guys think so? Like, are any of you guys out there thinking that maybe they ha- that's the reason oh, yeah. Schwartz is so ride or die for Tom is because they've got some sort of a connection that goes beyond friendship? Schwartz is in love with Tom. 
it's I'm I'm calling it, dude. Wow. Like broke back mountain style. They do it in secret. <laughs> it's all hot and sweaty. Oh my god. I'm telling you. Wow. I'm telling you. Your daughter had that same vibe. Well, if that's true, I would just wish that they could tell the truth oh, or I, that we could know about it because I would that would be away. so fed. Talk about something that would outshine Scandaball if that came out. That would be fantastic. I know. know. But I don't know about all that. Uh, It's in my dreams. (laughs) It is in your dreams. Um, I saw a clip of Sheena and Lala in Tahoe. I think this is going to be on next week's episode, unless it was this week's and I didn't realize it, but (laughs) where Sheena's actually talking about her conflict over Tom because she says during the pandemic, she was really low on funds. She wasn't making any making any money they had discontinued her podcast which obviously she went on to start on her own but like she was really worried about money and tom sent her several thousand dollars without being asked just sent her several thousand dollars via paypal just to help her out because she had just had summer moon she had a lot going on in her life and so she's conflicted because she knew tom before she knew ariana tom and her had a standalone friendship outside of ariana tom has done some demonstrably cool things to help sheena wow and so she's really torn up about having to ice him out and not be friends i mean i guess that makes sense I guess, but it's hard for me to like see some of the good in Tom Sandoval because I just think he's like super fucking manipulative. I just Mm -hmm. think he, he toys around with people and he just wants people for the attention and for like the look of it all like because he's such an extrovert he's like yeah look at me i've got all these right. friends it's like why he had all those randos for his birthday right. party like it was just for appearances rather than just being a cool dude turning 41 or whatever how old, however old he is and just drinking a beer on the couch i feel like he's probably in the business of paying for his friendships uh. because with james when james got engaged to rachel raquel he gave James, I think, $25,000 toward his proposal. Like he had yeah. so much fun with it. But like he has, he seems to have a very generous spirit, but it could be manipulative mm-hmm. just to keep people around him and loyal to him. Yeah. I know people like this in my, in my real life. I know people who think that that's what friendship means by just providing money. And they're like, yeah you should think I'm a good person because Mm -hmm. I provide so much for you. And this is how they are in their relationships too. And I'm just like, "Uh, that doesn't make a whole friendship. It doesn't make a whole relationship if you're just giving people money Mm -hmm. because you think that that's like the humanitarian thing to do. Or like, yeah, the only way people will stay around is if they can use you. Like that sets up very bad relationships. Yes. But I just, um, yeah, I think this is the conflict we're going to see begin to develop over the next few episodes is just Sheena being really conflicted and also perhaps Lala, Mm. certainly as it concerns Schwartz, but also maybe Sandoval. Although I think she fights with Sandoval in the next episode about something. But anyway, I want to see that. Onward and upward. Let's keep going. Anyway, yeah, everybody's, you know, getting ready to go to Tahoe. Schwartz and Sandoval are going shopping, but Schwartz is poor and can't afford anything, which is sad. But um, they start talking about Rachel because Schwartz gets some notifications on his phone. And he's like, oh, Raquel changed her name to Rachel. And Sandoval's like, yeah, I knew that already. And then he gets another notification. And it's Rachel is out of the mental health facility. And Sandoval's like, yeah, I knew that already Mm -hmm. because I tried texting her. And she ghosted me. And that I think that hurts um, Sandoval's feelings oh, a yeah. little bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a narcissistic injury. Mm-hmm. And he's having a hard time getting over it. Yeah. Um, I also think he really wants Rachel to come back because it would be so flipping good for the show. Uh, what if she does? What if it's been this whole thing, like she doesn't show up or anything, but then she does? like At, at the, the very, at the the very last end. episode and Ooh. then comes back. I think she's coming back next season oh uh, yeah and that's gonna get those ratings all the way back up i can't to see wait. what happens i think ariana might be gone by then i think if rachel comes back ariana goes i mean yeah i would i don't think we need ariana i'm no. sorry i'm just saying it i don't think we need ariana that doesn't mean i'm not team ariana with right. regard to what happened but i just don't think she adds a whole lot to the cast well and i'm like does she even want to be involved it doesn't seem like she wants to be it doesn't seem like she genuinely likes anybody except for katie mm-hmm and yeah, I don't think she wants to be there except for the paycheck. So yeah. get on. We don't need you. Yeah, bye. Although it was funny when her and Katie were talking about their restaurant, somebody shitting on their yeah. porch. 
Yeah, like all of the regulations that they have to go through and the permits and the things that they have to do. That's California for you, honey. I uh, know. It's hard to be in business in California. So they're struggling. And I don't think something about her is open to this day. I mean, uh, when I is think it about, ever going to open? Is it a prop for the show? I mean, it feels like it a mm-hmm. little bit. I feel like it's going to be like Schwartz and Sandy's taking forever to open. And then it's just going to be a flop. Yeah. And then, um, oh, and Sheena and Brock go shopping for bikinis and they fight at the bikini store because Brock's super pissed that Sheena is still nervous about leaving their baby with anybody. Like they just found a nanny and then the nanny doesn't pan out because she has to go nanny for another family that just had a baby and the nanny had a baby herself and it's this big old thing and Brock doesn't want Sheena his mom to be around all the time. So what does he want Sheena to do? Uh, uh, right. Like what is the expe- what is she supposed to pull out of her ass to make him happy in this situation? Right. Like she's dealing with anxiety for which she has no compassion whatsoever. Mm-hmm. At least she has her mom and her sister. They're right there. They help with the baby, but Brock seems to really resent that and he doesn't want his mother-in-law to be around all the time. But like Summer Moon is young, mm-hmm. so at th- you don't want them around, but at the same time you want to be gone all the time. You want to have date nights. You want to go to Tahoe. You want to be able to have some freedom in your relationship. So why don't you workshop that problem? Right. And why don't you find out a solution instead of putting all that emotional labor onto Sheena? I know. And then yelling at her in public. In public. I'm like, why are you bringing this up? And why are you talking about her mommy issues and shit? I'm like, dude, this guy is a dick. Like, he's just really harsh I mean, he apologizes for it later when they're in Tahoe, but that's like several days after the Mm -hmm. fact. And I'm just like, this guy sucks. I feel like they're trying to create and or force a storyline. I feel like he is for sure Mm -hmm. because he wants to play more of a role in terms of the cast, especially now that things are shifting around. Because he's nothing. And I think this is like the way that he thinks he's going to do it. But you're coming off it's giving weirdo yeah it's giving what are you talking about your wife has legitimate anxiety and ocd she's like getting treated for this like what are we doing here yelling at her and putting her down for doing her very best she's the fucking breadwinner bra Uh, for real though yeah she's the one who bankrolled your dumb gym app which didn't go anywhere she's the one who's taking care of your entire life and we're sitting in this shop and you're yelling at her okay i know okay and i hate him yeah And I can't stand him. And we don't need him. No, we don't. We do not need him. We don't need Sheena, though, either, because Sheena keeps talking about how she doesn't want to leave her baby, but then she's literally without her baby all the time. Right. Going to bars, going to Tahoe. We do need Sheena, though, because she's an intermediary between certain of the cast members. But, like, we don't need Brock whatsoever. He adds nothing and you know what really bothered me too was like how he talked to tom sandoval now yeah tom sandoval's a piece of fucking shit yeah but like when he's wearing his fucking speedo <laughs> brock with his long silk robe yeah. like because he's not a narcissist or anything no 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 and no. tom comes down and he immediately starts in on tom i mean if i'm tom and i've been on this franchise for i don't know 12 years and i'm the number one guy in the group which tom you know used to be but like he's got more currency in this group than brock could ever have like to presume for you to lecture me I know. on some shit. Like, who are you anyway? Like, the second that they get to Tahoe, right. I'm like, like, give it a breath. Right. Like, you're not my friend. Yeah. You weren't there for me. Like, you're nobody to me. And again, I'm not taking it for Tom Sandoval. I'm just like, Brock, who do you think you are? I know. You're literally an NPC. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're the background character on the show. Get the right. fuck off my TV, <laughs> dude. Know. You suck. I know. It would have been w- way better if James just, like, went in on Sandoval right. the second that they got there. But he didn't. Well, James did it the right way he like did. james said hey how are you doing he's not coming in too strong he's like giving him a wide berth they're gonna get to that conversation when it happens organically but like fucking brock and a speedo just being the moral <laughs> voice of the group i'm like i need you to fucking get off my tv i know i'm like Ooh, who i don't you? like there's something about him i do not like i'm telling you cheater vibes dude he just doesn't give me good vibes mm-hmm. at all he just seems like a dick he seems like he treats sheena pretty bad I don't know. But Sheena's also annoying and uh, whatever. Yeah. But once they're all in Tahoe and after Brock um, confronts Sandoval in the kitchen for some reason, everybody (laughs) kind of gets settled. And then Schwartz is like, yeah, I'm really glad I brought the gang back together here. And, you know, I'm trying to get the family back. And it's all because of me. Right. I'm like, oh, God. Right. This guy. Yeah. This fucking guy. I can't stand him. Taking credit. It's not really about peace in the group. It's about 
I'm the one who did it. Yes. So I get credit for that. That's totally mm-hmm. it. And it's kind of cringy. Oh, and then in the car ride before they even get to the um, house that he rented for everybody, he's talking with Sandoval and Sandoval starts crying. Right. And, and Schwartz is like, are you okay, buddy? But like, Cry it out. Can we talk about what he's crying about? He's crying because when they were all at the airport and he went into the airport <laughs> bar, like Sheena said, hey, we're over here. Like, in other words, you can sit by us. And that's what he's crying about. Like that gesture was so meaningful. It was so... Like it was so, I don't know, you know, like meaningful to me. <laughs> and he's got this fucked up glycerin tear coming down the side of his face. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, what is this? I don't care. And then they cut to him on, in his talking head in that fucked up green blazer with gold buttons. And he's crying more just about how he's been in a dark place. I literally checked out. I'm like, Me I too. can't hear your voice warbling. This is so fucking fake. I am an empathic person. Me honey. Too. I mean, women, we are too. We're intuitive. Yeah. Like I can see you. Mm-hmm. And I know this is a manipulation and you don't mean this shit. No. Because as you mentioned last week, like on the weekends though, you're out with the most extras. You're calling out Raquel and Tom Schwartz and you're having a great old time, but you're crying in the car. Okay. Yeah. I, like I sure, sure Jan, we buy it. And even in his talking head in that green blazer, after he's done crying and he's talking about everybody's getting settled at the at the house and he's like, Well, it's nice that, you know, most people are being cordial to me, but everybody's not taking accountability for what they did to me right. and how they treated me and the podcasts and the merch and profiting off of my misery. And I'm like, okay, I get it, but at the same time, dude, you fuck around and you find out. Like you did the worst thing. Mm -hmm. on this cast Mm -hmm. and you also fucking filmed this mistress that you were banging without her consent so that's another fucked up thing that you did Mm -hmm. and i'm sure nobody knows about that well nobody's talking about it i think at Mm. this time people do know about it at this time what is it july or august like all the friends yeah i think that people know about the the tape and that this happened why we're not calling this despicable behavior out in the actual friend group is beyond me you'd think lala or any of these girls would say something about that even though they hate raquel that's fine at least you would say something like what the fuck are you doing tom yeah for real that's against the law and it's uh, i I know i don't know why nobody uh, maybe because of the legal ramifications of having that conversation on camera maybe bravo or evolution doesn't want them to but if that were me he's somebody in my friend group i would be like calling his ass out oh me too i'd be like fuck this dude Mm -hmm. but instead tom gives this whole narrative like this air that he's working on himself when they're out on the patio and yeah. everybody gets settled in their swimsuits. He's like, Oh yeah, I'm sober now. And I'm like, you know, trying to really like work on myself and be a better person. Lala's fucking ass is like, yeah, I think it's admirable that he's working on himself. I'm like, really? It, because that's her entire identity is sobriety. So Ugh. he's. I feel like Tom is doing this intentionally to try and connect with Lala because she, he knows that's really important to her. And that if he gives up liquor, that's going to be meaningful to her. So I just feel mm. like it's another way to like manipulate Lala and the group. And I want to say again, like, I think Tom Sandoval has a point here. Like Sheena, you were absolutely gross. The lengths you went to, to profit off of everything that happened, which did not happen to you. It didn't happen right. to you. Yeah. And the way that you made it about you is problematic. And Lala, you did the same thing on your own podcast and in your own way. Everybody profited about this situation and over what happened to Tom. Like, I think there's a conversation that they could happen that they could have. And I think he tried to have it with Sheena two episodes ago when he's wanted to say, I would have never done that to you. Right. Like if something terrible had happened to you, or if you tripped and did something terrible on the world stage, I would not be out here on podcasts calling you out for it and trying to interview all of these people so I can make money off of your name. Like there's something to that that I think is valid that we could talk about. But because Tom hasn't taken organic, authentic responsibility for the shit that it is, and you can tell he doesn't feel it internally. Oh, he no, He doesn't yeah. feel sorry. Every single interview he does, every podcast he's on, it's always, I'm sorry, but. Mm-hmm. He doesn't actually take responsibility for anything that he's done. Because of that, we don't want to hear about anything that anybody else did that may have hurt your feelings. Yeah. Because you aren't coming correct in this 
situation. Right. And I don't buy that you're working on yourself just because you stopped fucking drinking. Like, okay, congrats right. that you stopped drinking. That's great. But that doesn't mean that you're fucking healed and that you're this great person and you're humble. Although he is taking Lisa Vanderpump's advice during this trip and he's being very nice and cordial and saying, thank you guys for being nice to me. And I... Uh, set up a guided meditation for us all to do so we can oh heal God. together. I'm like, oh, this is cringe. Yeah, yeah. And then even when he talks with James later, like he's trying to be kind of nice, kind of low key, whatever, because that's what Lisa Vanderpump told him to do. Mm -hmm. Be humble. That way you can get on everybody's good side. Right. But so he, <laughs> it's mm. not something he truly feels mm -mm. about himself no. or about the group. He's just trying to keep his job. Yeah. He's just trying to be able to be a part of the social circle, which is the premise for this show, which is his job. Yes. That's what he's doing. And, and everybody cringe. can see it and James can see it. And you could see James knowing it in the midst of that conversation. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I love James Loki. <laughs> I yeah. know you hate yeah, him. I know, I know you think he's a piece of shit, but I I'm just, like, I kind of like his energy. I suspect this him to be a, a domestic abuser and Ugh, that's, just not. A, that's just a no-go for me there's I not, not. I, I don't know if there's an, enough evidence there's just girls who have said so um but I, there's not even one man on this cast that i like there's not one man. no yeah they're all pretty terrible mm -hmm. <laughs> they all are pretty terrible and then while everybody's on the patio talking about graham cracker changing his name to hippie i don't care I mean, no, no, no nobody cares boring we get a scene with Ariana talking to her interior designer or furniture person. Right. I don't know at yeah. their house, yeah. Tom and Ariana's house. And this is where she's talking about how, you know, Tom wants to buy her out of the house. She's warming up to that idea, but only he only gets the walls. Mm -hmm. I want to be reimbursed for literally all the furniture and everything that's in this house because basically she paid for everything so she's like walking around talking 100%. about all these chairs yes. and the couches and stuff and i'm like what do you mean reimbursed like are you gonna let him keep it and she just wants the money probably i would just take all the fucking furniture but I why mean, i mean she might move into an apartment she might move true. to new york and she might not be able to take the furniture maybe she doesn't want it because she shared it with him but that's true she should get the monetary value of it yeah. depreciated for time and use but like she should get some money for that oh for sure it's and nice she, the I furniture's mean, nice all of those chairs were yeah. super like name brand and stuff mm -hmm. and i mean they look horribly uncomfortable and terrible but right that's great and then like the, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking artwork and mm -hmm. the um, weird chandeliers that she has that were all designed that are super expensive i'm like yes queen Mm -hmm. get all of that money i think that's great i can too. pay it all up yeah i'm just all part of the negotiation mm -hmm. once they go to court and try to figure everything out and that's what they're doing right now yeah which i'm excited to see how that mm -hmm. goes i'm like i wish we could have more of those conversations like we were just saying mm -hmm. like let's get into the legal stuff let's get into the breakdown of the house i don't care about talk i think it's the very beginning of that though like i, I don't hope. think she, um, she might have been consulting an attorney i don't know if he is but like this is the very beginning of these types of conversations and hopefully as we go on we'll be able to hear some more but like yeah. i'm not holding my breath yeah we'll see and then we get back to tahoe and this is where everybody starts getting like dressed to go to lisa vanderpump's new restaurant that's under construction called wolf, wolf. oh my god it's be masculine and woodsy like tahoe yeah. Okay. I'm like, okay, Lisa Vanderpump. But it's like a total mess in this new restaurant because they're it's all under construction and there's like a wall up for everybody to knock down Honey, with their weak ass swings. You want to talk about cringe? I mean, this whole scene. The whole thing was cringy. I mean, it was sad when Tom Schwartz hit the wall and said, <laughs> I don't want to be single at 40. I know. That's sad. But I mean, again, you brought that shit on yourself. Yeah. But like when Tom Sandoval. Bitch. This part. started hitting the wall over and, and over, calling out Scandaval and then calling out Lala. Worm with a mustache. And I'm just like, oh my God, this was his moment I know. to perform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It and was he couldn't even really like, swing the fucking sledgehammer. No, dude. He's got those thin little <laughs> toothpick <laughs> arms. You're skipping arm day and leg day. All days are being skipped, but like it was just so performative yeah and 
Like, do you not have the function to see how it is you appear to other people? No. Like, I feel like I can do that. I can kind of tell if I'm talking too much or I can kind of tell, you know, if somebody wants me to, I can, you can, you get the vibe. Yeah. If I check. check. But Tom does not have any sense whatsoever None. how this is coming across to other people. They're literally laughing at him. I know. And I'm cringing watching it through my fingers on this episode. I'm like, dude, uh, 40 how old is he 42 41 41, 41 what or 42. a fucking loser dude i can't like every time i see him i'm like i hate you with your fucking mm-hmm. nail polish and your fucking <laughs> i like lightning. his nail polish i mean Ugh. i don't mind a metrosexual male i like him i like him having his own sense of style i don't necessarily like that i mean i don't, I don't have a problem with any of that i have a problem with this bullshit yeah calling out lala's name i know calling out all of this shit ariana i don't remember everything he said i didn't yeah. write it down but i was just like oh god can i fast forward this I know. <laughs> this is not hitting how you think it's hitting with the kids i know it was uncomfortable and everybody's calling it out like oh i said that to him i said that to him I'm like oh god and this just proves like tom you're not actually working on yourself yeah. or like actually taking any accountability yep. because you're still mad at everybody else for some fucking reason you're still blaming you're it's still so pointing ridiculous. fingers you're still deflecting like he didn't even hit the hammer for what he did he I know. just was <laughs> what about the things you caused I'm like, jesus I crackers uh and then after that Wild. cringe fucking sledgehammer therapy session everybody goes to lunch with lisa vanderpump and this Why? was also kind of weird why does she have to be in scenes at all i mean right like let's get the party started kids i'm like oh my god no <laughs> now, now we can't party because you're here <laughs> plus you're our boss a little bit you're the executive producer of the show right you're i don't know 60 something like beat it i know lisa and you know they're going to like a 2 p.m dinner because she's old (laughs) (laughs) early birth special (laughs) yeah for real and this whole thing was just like awkward because people are talking to schwartz and they're like yeah it's sad that you hit the sledgehammer for wanting to be not wanting to be single at 40 what about your friends with benefits joe right which i'm just like he's not fucking joe he's thinking about sandoval (laughs) well the rumor was that he was with joe or that a beard. they were in a relationship but like he was very reticent to claim her because apparently she's kind of a weirdo what i don't know like in that scene from last week when joe was there and tom and tom were trying to talk about stuff and joe kept trying to interject apparently joe like talks a lot oh and talks over people and inserts herself into situations and so they kept talking over her but yeah i, I think she's a weirdo and I think maybe Schwartz was with her for a period of time, but now is just trying to get rid of her. That's cringe. Yeah. Uh, he just keeps saying that the table too. He's like, I'm single. I'm fine with it, you guys. But yeah. you know, he cries himself to sleep with his plants <laughs> in his plants. apartment. His succulents. I know. Yeah. And then Lisa fucking Vanderpump, for some reason, says, hey, let's everybody say one thing we love about Sandoval. James, you start. Why? Literally, why and nobody says anything like james doesn't say anything nobody wants to say anything and meanwhile sandoval's taking selfies with Brock. i know <laughs> see somebody likes me i'm sitting here with somebody i have a friend on the cast oh. that was so ridiculous like, that was Lisa, really cringe. why do you need why do you need to advocate for this guy so much i don't get it uh, because she feels bad for him because he manipulated her and said that he wanted to unalive himself and so she's like worried about him and his mental health even though he's taking selfies with brock and doesn't care. No, he doesn't. He literally is there for the optics and for the show because he wants to get paid. Yeah, that That's was it. that was ridiculous. And then after dinner, after the early bird dinner, all the young kids mm-hmm. are still wanting to go out. The so they forty go out year olds, thirty five to forty year olds. <laughs> yeah, they all want to go out for drinks afterwards. So they go do that, and then Sandoval asks James to go and talk with him yet again. We have to have another private conversation mm-hmm. with him and James. And I mean, this one was a little bit better than the birthday party one because Sandoval wasn't as defensive. Right. And James kind of opens up about it and he's like, dude, you were like my big bro. Right. I looked up to you. I idolized you. I fucking loved you. And then you fucking betrayed me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like, this is cringe. (laughs) You know, and I can see why he feels betrayed because Tom Sandoval slept with his ex-girlfriend. But I mean, he wasn't actually with Raquel anymore. You know, he was already moving on to Allie, I think. Right. I mean, but I can still see like how that would hurt that your best friend, somebody you think is your best friend and your brother went on to sleep with your ex. Like, that's bad. Like, and it's something that would be so easy to own. For sure. It's not like what he did to Ariana. Like, it's 
to James and James has been a piece of shit and he's yeah. moved on from Kristen to somebody else to somebody else to Lala. He's cheated w- on Raquel with Lala. So all you have to do is say, yeah, that was really wrong. Like, yeah. You're my bro. I should not have done that. I'm sorry. I was over. Like it's super easy to own and clear, but Tom just can't do it. He tries to do it in this conversation. Mm-hmm. He does apologize and say, I'm sorry, but he doesn't really say what he's sorry for. Right. He doesn't say what I've learned from what I did. And he doesn't say, well, this is how I'm going to change my behavior so I can promise you it never happens again. Like none of that kind of conversation mm-hmm. happens. It's just like, I'm sorry, you know, and I really want to get back to being bros. Yeah. Like, let's be bros again. Hopefully we can rekindle our broship. Yeah. But I did like that James also confronted him with the whole affair. And he was like, you could have fucking broken up with Ariana. Like, yes, if things I were loved so that. bad. Yes. Like, you could have broken up with her and then gotten with Raquel, but you didn't. And then Sandoval, again, is like, but it wasn't that easy. You don't understand you don't how hard it. it was. Oh. The way she looked at me. Oh. The way she talked to me, man. It wasn't that easy. You don't get it. So fucking stupid. I'm yes. like, that is so dumb. And so such an unmanly like unmature imma- unmature <laughs> immature mm-hmm. answer to say like it is that easy you could have just fucking told ariana look we're not having sex you're kind of a bitch to me i don't want to be in this relationship with you let's break up amicably and then try to untangle all of our finances and everything so that way i can go fuck raquel <laughs> right no matter what that would have been the best thing to do yes. but like try to defend in this conversation with james why you didn't do that like oh my god please stop just shut your mouth i know and i can't believe like in his talking head sandoval's talking head he's like trying to throw oriana under the bus and like we've talked about this before in prior episodes like you said you've watched this whole series and mm-hmm. you've seen how much of a bitch ariana could be to sandoval and so like yeah maybe their relationship wasn't the best Maybe he wasn't happy. Again, doesn't justify cheating on her no, with, your be- with her best friend. Walk away from the relationship. Be a big boy. Yes. Make a decision, even though it hurts somebody and it hurts you. Just do it. I think he's got a cheating fetish. Mm-hmm. Like if he did this with Kristen wh- and getting with Ariana, like I think he's got a cheating fetish. Like he likes the thrill because some people are like that. They like the excitement and everything. But then get with somebody who's kinky and then open your marriage or something or like open right. a relationship. Create a relationship that can accommodate the things that you want to do. Exactly. But can I just qualify my comment about Ariana being a bitch? I mean, I think I would be a bitch too if I was with Tom Sandler. Uh, for real, yeah. I mean, and the money that he's putting behind all of these fucking vanity projects, these bands and these parties and these things that he's so extravagant, like, and just who he thinks he is. Like, he's a narcissist. Like, I can't imagine the emotional toil that would take on, like, a normal, stable person to have to cohabitate with somebody like that. Yeah. So, yeah, every now and again, she's like, ew, Tom, shut up. Because, Tom, you should shut up. Yeah. You know, I mean, she should have left the relationship, obviously. He should have as well. But, like, I just there's a reason Ariana was like that from time to time. Uh, Nobody knows what happened behind closed doors, but like I get it is all I'm saying. Right. I just couldn't believe that in this episode, he's still saying, yeah, but everybody else treated me like crap. They need to acknowledge how they treated me. Right. I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong with you? You have to get to the place where you're okay with nobody apologizing to you, even though they may or may not have done something to harm you. Right. You have to get to the place where you don't need that apology. You just want to hold yourself accountable to make amends where they need to be made. And if they come back to you some other time and say, sorry, that's just gravy. That's just wonderful. But you don't need it and you don't expect it. That's not how apologies work. Right. But, you know, he's doing guided meditation. Okay. So well, he's hope, really hope that helps you. Yeah. So um, um, hope it helps you. God, I can't wait to see that stupid guided meditation next episode. <laughs> it's going to be so cringe. Is this how it ends with, with James and Tom? That's Is that it. the last thing? Okay. Yeah. The preview for next week, which is just a fight with Lala. Mm-hmm. Because I think he starts coming for people for profiting off of Scandaval. Oh. He's going to start blaming some of these people and they're going to have a bad reaction to it as one would expect. Yes, which I'm kind of excited to see because I yeah, want some drama. Please. And there's a lot of talky talk. Yeah, anything. I just please. Yeah, let's get to it. Bravo. Just let's get to Evolution. It. I can't believe that I join this show, this series, when everyone starts getting sober. I know. <laughs> and starts getting like less shitty. Right. Yeah, it, it, it would have been better for you to pop on in earlier seasons, but I'm still holding out. I still think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good. I think it will be I think too. we're going to start seeing some interesting things like again, Katie with the girlfriend mm-hmm. who also likes Schwartz. So yeah. it's a love triangle. Like I definitely want to get to that. I know. And some of the 
other things that happened with Tom and Ariana because we saw the preview where she's shrieking about her children. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean children? Like, there's a lot I hope that is still to come. But I'm just wondering if evolution is reading social media. Yeah. Is evolution reading fucking Reddit and the Vanderpump Rules subreddit? Because they're hating the way that this season is going. Are they? Just for five episodes. And yeah, they're hating it because it does feel very heavy handed. Like production is trying to make us forgive Tom Sandoval. And we just, we're not ready to. No. Especially if he's not going to demonstrate the behaviors that we need to see in order to do it. Right. So like change it up while you still can. It's the beginning of the season. Get your editors in and give us something more. Yeah, I was seeing some shit on Reddit like last week or something that they were saying that they think that the show's being edited as we're watching it. Mm -hmm. Like that some people are noticing some of the, I guess like some of the times that the episodes have been posted or whatever and they're developing some conspiracy theories about the narrative. Like they had to change it last minute Mm -hmm. because Rachel decided not to be on the show or something. But I'm like, if they are editing the show while we're watching it, that's your next best Edit narrative. It better. Is, like the fucking <laughs> redemption arc. Make it better. Like what are we doing? I yeah. don't get it. Well, hopefully it starts to make sense. I mean, I'm still enjoying the show. Yeah, overall. I enjoy it as well. Like I like the dynamics between the people. I mm-hmm. think there's a lot of like, I like all the gossip. I like how vapid all these people yes, are. Yes. Oh my God. Oh. So out of touch. So crazy. Living in Southern California. Just injecting their lips and just stuff. Ungrounded just like, AF, except for Katie and Ariana. They're uh, grounded. They seem like real people who exist on our planet. But for these sure. other ones are just lost in the fucking Hollywood I matrix. Know. And I it's know. great. Which is a shame because I liked Lala at first. And now I'm just kind of like, ugh. You're saying that Sandoval's admirable for him being sober. Well, that's all she's got. But I mean, I I do like Lala. I mean, I think she often is the voice of reason, but mm-hmm. a broken clock is right twice a day. So like, wow, well, yeah. we'll just see how things go. But yeah, we will definitely continue to watch. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to say about VPR before we go? That's about it. Next week, we're going to start covering Seeking Sister Wife. Oh, my God. I'm excited about that. Yeah. And as a reminder, normally we release our podcast at the beginning of the week on a Monday for patrons, Tuesday for everybody else. But because we're doing secret Seeking Sister Wives, which comes out on Monday, we're going to be doing Tuesday and Wednesday. So Tuesday, yeah. if you're a patron, and Wednesday if you're a regular schmegular mm-hmm. um, but VPR will stay the same Thursday Friday so yeah. just FYI don't worry about mommy and mommy we'll be back we're coming <laughs> back from the store we're bringing groceries yes yeah. we are we'll be a little late but we'll be back yes um, is there anything else else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons Beatrice? well if you love our podcast i sure hope that you give a like on this video subscribe to our youtube channel if you're watching there and then go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review <laughs> it really helps us grow the pod so thank you so much and until next time please don't forget that we've got nothing but love for you and peace out bye <laughs>